Good evening. This is All India Radio Kohima. I'm Kahir Chisite. The headlines. Nagaland government announces VAT reduction on diesel, petrol and other motor spirit by 7 rupees per litre with immediate effect. Chief Secretary Nagaland J. Alam says coffee is the most promising plantation in the state. Union government selects 42 companies under PLI scheme for white goods. And Festival of Lights, Diwali being celebrated across country today. As India achieved the milestone of vaccinating 100 crore people against COVID-19, All India Radio salutes all the people, doctors, nurses and others who made this possible. Even though the country has achieved this feat, we caution our listeners that the battle against COVID is not yet over. We appeal to our listeners who are yet to fully get vaccinated to get vaccinated at the earliest and also help others to get vaccinated. During the festival season, Please follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain six feet for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-239-78046 and 1075 and State Helpline number 1800-345-0019. And now the news in detail. Chief Minister Nipi Rio has announced reduction of value-added tax on diesel and petrol and other motor spirit sold within the state of Nagaland by 7 rupees per litre with immediate effect. After the centre's decision to cut excise duty on petrol and diesel, several BJP and NDA rule states has announced to reduce value-added tax VAT on fuel to further provide relief to consumers. The centre yesterday announced slashing of excise duty on petrol by 5 rupees and on diesel by 10 rupees. The centre had also urged the states to reduce the VAT on petrol and diesel. As after the announcement, governments of several BJP rule states including Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, Assam, Goa, Tripura, Karnataka, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Manipur and Bihar declared reduction in VAT on fuel. Chief Secretary Nagalan J. Alam said coffee is the most promising plantation in the state. He regretted it this to the first generations of entrepreneurs for taking the initiative of coffee plantation. Chief Secretary was addressing to the coffee growers during his visit to Kebensin Agri and Allied Cooperative Society coffee farm at Sendenyu village on the Kohima district today. He was accompanied by Agriculture Production Commissioner APC Nagalan Waiki Keto Sema, an official from the Land Resource Department. He said, today people are taking up plantations such as coffee, rubber and other crops which are of commercial base and commercially viable, stating that Nagaland is blessed with fertile land and lies on a huge resource. Alam said, for the last 30 to 40 years the state have been experimenting on all kinds of activities as long as fun was available. He said, subsidy culture has spoiled the habit of men. Alam therefore said, any land-based activity which is viable without any subsidy needs to be taken up. The Chief Secretary was impressed of Sendenyu Village for taking up sustainable coffee plantation. He also expressed happiness over the partnership between the department and the farmers in the efforts of growing coffee in the area. APC Waiki Keto Sema said, Agri and Allied should come together and build the economy of the state, stating that coffee being the first agriculture product of the state to reach the international market, he said the department envisioned to set up 50,000 hectares of coffee plantation in the state by 2030. Kiketo emphasized on the need to create more awareness on coffee plantation to the farmers. The APC therefore said coffee being a shed plant can enhance value addition to the farmers. During the visit, the chief secretary along with APC and others harvested the coffee as well as planted the saplings. Mention may be made that the Kebensin Agri and Allied Cooperative Society coffee farm have supplied 1,80,000 coffee saplings, enabling 45 households in Sendenyu area to start coffee farming till date. This news comes to you from All India Radio Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin on our YouTube channel AIR News Kohima. To commemorate the celebration of 75 years of India's independence, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, we present India at 75 quiz with AIR News Kohima. A special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history every Thursday in the evening news bulletin. And here goes our question of the week for English news bulletin. Which Indian city served as the summer capital during the British Raj 
and was called the Queen of the Hills. I repeat, which Indian city served as the summer capital during the British Raj and was called the Queen of the Hills? Listeners can send their responses to the question to our email airnewscohimaindia75 at gmail.com or WhatsApp to 9485-239950 along with name and address. The first correct answer received from the participant will be selected as the winner and will be announced in tomorrow's morning news at 7.30 a.m. Union Government has said that 42 companies have been selected under production-linked incentive PLI scheme for white goods. Commerce and Industry Ministry said 26 companies will invest 3,898 crore rupees for air conditioner components and 16 companies will invest 716 crore rupees for LED component manufacturing. The ministry said this will envisage creating additional direct employment of about 44,000 persons. The proposal of PLI scheme for white goods was approved by the Union Cabinet in April this year. Festival of Lights Diwali is being celebrated across the country with traditional fervour and gaiety today. The festival, which marks the victory of good over evil, is celebrated by lighting up houses, temples and other public places. President, Vice President and Prime Minister have greeted people on the occasion. President Ram Nath Kovin said that Deepawali gives the message of mutual affection, fraternity and brotherhood. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu said that this festival brings light, harmony, prosperity and peace into our lives. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has greeted the people on the auspicious occasion of Diwali. Celebrating the festival with the armed forces, Modi said, spending Diwali with the armed forces for him is in the same spirit as celebrating Diwali with his family. He said that is why he has spent all his Diwalis with the armed forces at the border after assuming the Prime Minister's post. Prime Minister Modi said he has not come alone but has brought with him the wishes of the 130 crore Indians. Nagaland today reported 15 new positive cases of COVID-19 and 15 recoveries. Of the new cases reported, 13 were from Dimapur and one case each from Kohima and Peg. With this, the total tally in the state has increased to 31,894, while recovered cases improved to 29,966. With no report of COVID deaths today, that toll remained at 672. Currently, state's active COVID case lot stands at 195. South African author Damon Gulgut has won the 2021 Booker Prize for Fiction for his novel The Promise. 57-year-old Gulgut has won the award in his third appearance on the shortlist after making the cut in 2003 and 2010. He follows in the footsteps of other South African winners, Nadine Godima and J.M. Kudze, and is the first winner from the country since 1999. The Promise is set in Pretoria, where the author grew up and takes place against the backdrop of South Africa's transition out of apartheid. It tells the story of the declining Swart family, who are white farmers through four funerals. And now, to end the news, here are the main points once again. Nagaland government announces VAT reduction on diesel, petrol and other motor spirit by 7 rupees per litre with immediate effect. Chief Secretary Nagaland J. Alam says, Kofi is the most promising plantation in the state. Union government selects 42 companies under PLI scheme for white goods. And Festival of Lights, Diwali being celebrated across country today. That is all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.